born 22 months apart, Catherine and Elizabeth Gant were destined to a life filled with music. According to Catherine, we got our love of music from our mother, Ruth Gant. When she would come home from work, we'd say, Mother, tell us a story and make up a song. She has been our inspiration. Both graduated from the prestigious Cincinnati Conservatory of Music with degrees in opera in the early 1960s. Catherine started their original music education classes for young children at the Conservatory of Music, University of Missouri at Kansas City in 1962, where she was soon joined by Elizabeth. From the beginning, the Gantz sisters adopted a unique and ambitious goal. Their music and miniature classes were designed to be a cultural enrichment program centered around music and drama for young children ages three to six to give young children as complete an exposure to music as their ages will allow. The classes were carefully structured, but with plenty of fun and love thrown in to camouflage the process of learning. The first hour, devoted entirely to music, included singing, ear training, music theory, and exposure to classical composers and instruments of the orchestra. Puppets, storybooks, and chalkboards were often used as learning aids. After a cookie break, they designed the second half of the class as drama and theater time, costuming and casting the children in operettas that they could perform on the miniature stage. Each class session would end with the children leaving the classroom singing a goodbye song. In the early years, the sisters also taught music and theater classes for children of all ages. The students performed pieces ranging from Disney to Irving Berlin and Rodgers and Hammerstein. One of their students from the 1960s reminisces. As a young child in their classes, um, when I started out, they were actually doing both young children and older children. And this is actually one of the photos I had. And I think the smallest child here is me. One day after class, uh, Catherine approached me and my mother and told us that she was getting married and asked if I would consider being the flower girl in her wedding. And it was one of the most beautiful experiences for a child to have. Here is one of my treasured photos from that event. And to me, these two sisters were always like beautiful Disney princesses come to life. When you were in the sisters' classes or in their presence, you know, one of the other wonderful things about them is that they truly made everyone feel special and made everyone feel part of their magic. And I think that that's one reason why they're so loved is because you could not be with them and not feel their, the glow of their beauty and their joy rub off on you. In addition to their teaching, the sisters' career path also led them in another direction. Back in the early 1960s, they were shopping for music for their classes and were shocked by the lack of age-appropriate music available for young children. According to Elizabeth, there was Mother Goose and Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but not much else. So the Cincinnati Conservatory trained sisters took a pen and staff paper and began writing their own music. The Gantz sisters released their first tape in 1966. Since then, they've written an impressive body of sheet music and songbooks and recorded numerous tapes and CDs. Their melodies are memorable, the composition and orchestration is high quality, and the choir is the Lyric Opera Children's Chorus. Hal Cowan of Jenkins Music played a vital role in circulating and popularizing the Gantz sisters' music, along with other music shops like Vaccaro Piano and Organ. They're just, they're fun people. Everything they do is fun. They listen to the music, uh, and any the events we've done in the store with them have been just fantastic. I mean, it's the best, probably some of the best events we've ever had. You say Gantz sisters, everybody knows who you're talking about. It's, like I said, they're just fun people. They just, they did so much for music. And again, so many adults that have, have been through a program with the Gantz Sisters, which is good for those of us that are in the music business today. 
It's getting young children involved in music. And music is a gift. You know, so many kids lots of times don't realize it. But parents give kids music, be it piano lessons or guitar lessons or whatever, or general music, which the Gantz sisters would do. This is a gift they have forever. And this is what the Gantz sisters did. They got the youngsters involved in music. And it's something that they have forever. The sisters taught at the conservatory until 1974, when they decided to start their own business. For the next 10 years, they were on the Avila College campus until they moved to their Ranch Mart studio in 1984. My dad owned the Ranch Mart Shopping Center with, along with my mother, and they were the landlords of the Gantz sisters for, gosh, I guess 20 years, maybe longer, uh, during all the time that my kids actually went through the program. My dad was a real estate developer and was a very successful businessman. And a lot of people would describe him as being a fairly tough guy. I mean, real estate's a tough business. But my dad, when it came to the Gantz sisters, was just, he, he just melted. It, it was very common for him in his day to be kind of going back and forth, and he'd go by the front. He never, never, ever failed to stop and kind of look in the window there and watch the kids. And he really had a soft spot in his heart for, for children. And, uh, you know, I, I just think he just, he just enjoyed it. And frankly, it was, I think he found, you know, excuses to kind of run by here for some other reason and then stop for a second. and. Uh, and kind of look in on the kids. So it, 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 there, there was just a real a good connection between the sisters and, and my dad. And uh, uh, he, he felt very strongly that what they were doing was something that was really beneficial to the children and to, to just society in general. All of my kids went through the Gantz Sisters program and they all enjoyed uh, uh, the program. I mean, they, they, it's like all, a lot of small kids, they didn't know what to expect out of it when they went. Uh, they, they probably all started off with a certain amount of trepidation, but they all loved it and all wanted to come back and, and went through the entire program for as long as they, they could. I think they approached every child as a, as a young person that has you know, all these capabilities and they, what they wanted to do was, was to bring out as much as they possibly could from those children. The sisters' reputation and fan base grew as the years passed. They were asked to perform as guest artists with the Kansas City Symphony, the Coterie Theater, were guests on numerous radio and television broadcasts and performed at high-profile sporting events and at the request of Missouri Governor Mel Carnahan to dedicate a children's fountain in Jefferson City. As the years progressed, a new Kansas City tradition also began to emerge. First-generation Gantz Sisters students grew up and had their own children, and the sisters soon began to see children of their former students in their classes. Like many of the other parents, you know, uh, we'd wait outside at the end and uh, be, probably enjoy having the children in the classes just as much as the children enjoyed being in the classes because it brought back such fond memories of our own childhoods. Well, right now I'm studying music at uh, Carnegie Mellon University as a singer and I, I don't remember ever really being that interested in music before the Gantz Sisters. And music has become such a amazing huge part of my life and I really think I owe a lot of that to them and my interest in music and, and the, the fun experience that they made it has really transformed my life and it all started right here in this room I think. My favorite when I was younger here was the puppet shows. I always looked forward to them that the Gantz sisters would be the puppeteers and they'd always come down at our level and the kids would, we would get so excited. I am like my brother I'm not a singer but I do appreciate music so much and going to, I love going to music and I really, the music appreciation that was instilled in me by the Gantz Sisters will stay with me my whole life. In recent years, after having taught music to thousands of area children for over 40 years, Catherine and Elizabeth began to think about a second phase of their music careers in which they could devote all of their time and energy to writing and publishing their music. But they were torn. They wanted their school to continue as well. They dreamed of finding just the right person who could carry on for them and the children. They found that person in Cindy C. and her two beautiful daughters. They always use the terminology that they're passing the torch to us. And really, do, we do really feel that we are sort of picking up where they've left off. Um, as far as uh, the music, the curriculum, everything in this studio will be continued as much as we possibly can. We, we often say that we can't really fill their shoes, no one can, but it's gonna be our goal to follow in their footsteps. I like to think of the Gantz sisters as 
people who planted seeds that will just continue to grow for years and years within our community. I think that um, those seeds of love for the arts make the world a better place, whether it be in music, drama, all those dance, they're all covered in these little classes. And I think that's why the children, part of the reason the children love it so much. We're not going to try and be them, because there's nobody that can actually be them. But we're going to teach the children exactly, we're going to try to teach them exactly what they taught. Um, as far as being in their classes, I can't remember everything, but one thing that sticks out in my mind was um, whenever, you know, the things that they would teach, but you don't know it. They just, you were having such a wonderful time. I think their legacy is the fact that they started so many people uh, in music and got them to enjoy it. And again, there's so many of these people that'll go to the symphony uh, this season and listen to that started learning how to enjoy music with the Gantt sisters. Ears, foot training. <laughs> In their career, they've touched so many people. And when you think of the Gantt sisters, you have to think of what they've contributed to the community and that they're so just reaching out to kids and giving them something exciting to go to and instilling that music appreciation in them. There's just no one like them. They just instill happiness in everybody they meet and it sticks with people for a very, very long time. It, it was from the heart. It really was deep inside. It, you, know, you couldn't do this superficially and be as effective as they were. I mean, I think every child knew that, that when they came into that classroom, they were, they were special. They were unique individuals, and, and the, the Gantt sisters brought that out of them. So it, 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 they are truly unique individuals. I think their legacy lives on in the literally thousands of people who have been exposed to the beauty of their music throughout the, the years that they've been educating it. Uh, not only lives on through the, the publications and their recordings, but just in the hearts and the souls of the so many people whose lives they have so deeply touched. Really? Did you know that our dear Gantt sisters are not going to be in the studio anymore? Yes, I did, but we can't be sad, Willie, because we are going to work hard to get their music out to all the children of the world. Oh, I see. So this is the end of Act 1, but just the beginning of Act 2. That's it, Willie. You know, we've done so many puppet shows with the Gantt sisters over 46 years, and we always end the same way. Let's make that special ending a wish for the Gantt sisters right now. And they lose.